From Fargo and serving you on TV, online and on the go, this is Valley News Live 10 at 10. I came to work one day and I found out that my salon, JCPenney Salon, was one of the closing stores. Big box stores are on the decline here at home and across the country. Those closures putting thousands of people out of work. Valley News Team's Molly Casey talked to a group of stylists who were facing unemployment because of a store closure, but they did something really, really innovative, and now no one is out of work. So, Molly, explain to us what happened. So, the manager of the JCPenney salon, she really did not want any of her employees to be unemployed, so she decided to create her own salon and brought it to life. It, it was a shock. In March, Savannah Sprouse learned the salon she managed inside the Jamestown J.C. Penney was closing with the store. It was probably the hardest day of my life. I had to tell all of my employees that they were no longer going to have a job. Sprouse knew her employees wouldn't have many options to find work, so she found a storefront to create her own salon. Everybody was on board and very supportive. After the space was heavily renovated, she and the stylists opened the doors of Vivacious Salon door opens. Wow. AJ Clark had been a JC Penny salon stylist for years and was grateful for Sprouse's idea to open Vivacious. Just so we'd have a job basically and be able to feed our kids and keep a roof over our heads. But the new salon was not an easy project. The JC Penny salon was supposed to close June 18th, but Sprouse's timeline was cut in half. Then they came back and told us, well, May 20th, we're going to close the salon early. Sprouse and her fiancé spent many late nights finishing the remodel, but her stylists say they and the community appreciate their work. Your clients see that. Everyone sees that. So it's a really welcoming environment. And the name Vivacious fits the new salon because Sprouse says they'll be around for a while. It's a great feeling. And Vivacious Salon had their grand opening this past week, and they're very excited to have their existing clients and new ones experience the new space. And, you know, things like this are happening all the time. The big box stores are closing, and you just have to be innovative like these ladies, and they're pretty lucky. They really are. The, the store itself is gorgeous, and it's truly going to be around for a while. I can tell that it has a lot of good energy in it. Thanks so much, Molly. Even though it could be hotter, the temperatures we're seeing right now can be very uncomfortable for our four-legged friends. Our reporter Maddie Jelta spoke with a vet about what owners can do to keep their furry friends safe when it's hot outside. Walking your dog in over 90 degree weather is too hot, especially walking on asphalt surfaces like sidewalks. Because of the black color, it gets a lot hotter than air temperatures. We do see burns on their paws, um, especially if there's hot, hot tar involved. Bettenhausen says the best way to avoid walking in hot temperatures is either walking earlier in the morning or later in the evening when those temperatures are lower. I try to walk her usually between 7 and 9 in the morning, um, especially if it's really hot, then I try to go a little bit earlier. Brown says the best thing to do is to carry water during walks, especially during this heat wave. Oh my. Dogs aren't the only animals that could be harmed from the three-digit temps. We have to be careful about livestock in North Dakota, too, and that's a big portion about what we see um, at our clinic. And so um, the same thing goes um, with livestock, with small animal. The advice Bettenhausen and Brown gives to pet owners is to limit your walks or not to walk your pet at all in this heat. Hundreds of demonstrators rally outside the Department of Justice in D.C. today. The demonstration is in protest of the NRA's response to the Philando Castile trial verdict over in the Twin Cities. Protesters criticized the NRA for being silent following the acquittal of former Minnesota police officer Euronimo Yanez in the killing of Castile, who was legally carrying a gun when he was shot. They say the NRA is, quote, only standing up for white gun owners. Demonstrators are also speaking out against an NRA recruitment video released last month that some interpreted as, quote, provoking fear and violence. The events were organized by the group that brought together the Women's March on Washington, D.C., the day after President Donald Trump's inauguration. You're always warned to be careful when giving rides home to strangers. Early this morning in Fargo, Aaron Knudsen was arrested, and he's accused of cutting a man on his neck. Now, the cut wasn't serious, and the man is going to be okay. It happened in downtown Fargo, according to police, around 2.40 this morning. After he hitched a ride with two strangers, an argument between Knudsen and the two men led to this incident. Knudsen is in the Cass County Jail facing an aggravated assault charge. Some enthusiastic athletes met up at Cycle Bar today to raise money for felons hoping for a second chance at life. 
Bikers bought seats for the Ride for F5 fundraiser where they supported the felon reintegration organization F5 while working up a sweat. The money will go towards a new women's shelter that the organization is establishing with the support of the community. The nice weather was a perfect backdrop to a very meaningful 5K this morning. The Mary Alice and Friends 5K offers support to families who've had miscarriages or stillborn children. Many of the families there today run this 5K to let people know it's okay to talk about the children you may have lost.